welcome to week two and also to uh, the second synchronous session. So the the Zoom session is really, I don't want to do any lecturing. So in a minute, I'm going to open up for questions and queries, but I will go through the bits and pieces that you really should have completed already. One of the things I'm experiencing with this group is that we've got some very um, conscientious and strong candidates who are pushing forward. Uh, Solomon isn't here, but he's way ahead. Uh, he's really, really um, uh, working through the materials very quickly. Uh, and then we've also got this big tail of people who um, don't seem very involved, and I don't see much evidence on the platform. So I'm going to demonstrate what has happened, and then you can also see that we're, we're tracking, we're watching what you're doing. <laughs> and uh, Big Brother is watching. And um, yeah, obviously, when Cole and your institution uh, ask for statistics, we've got tons of statistics to give them about who did what and when. All right. So, um, first of all, uh, in your mind, can you start thinking of some questions to ask me that would help you in terms of going forward? All right. And uh, hopefully on the screen, you can see the, uh, the website, the, the Moodle site. And let's get back to week one. All right. So, in week one, uh, we basically were just setting the scene. Now, you've got to start thinking about your course um, that you have authored and that you've submitted to Col. So the next phase will be to actually run it. All right. So, and then you obviously are going to be the facilitator. So what do you need to do to, in order to get traction? And the very problem I'm having could happen to you too. All right. The fact that the students are, are just not there. All right. Or they've disappeared or they show no interest. So hopefully this course is giving you some ideas about how to try and encourage engagement and to make sure that they feel excited about their studies. The big problem with e-learning and especially remote learning is there are just so many other competing priorities and people tend to keep putting off their own study time. So I would say you need to get a bit strong armed right at the beginning and say, right, we, um, you know, you really, really need to schedule it. It can't be just something that you do and there's nothing else being screamed at in your ear. All right. So, uh, when you're setting up your course, then think very clearly about um, how you will facilitate it and try and have high levels of engagement. So in the welcome section on week one, we, we gave you a little video about the, how the time is organized, right? This particular um, uh, course isn't very long. It's about 21 hours, I think. And uh, it's over three weeks. So the schedule, we made it very clear about what the schedule was. And if you look at the little video, it will explain. Obviously, your course objectives. Then there's a little study guide showing the agenda. Um, here it is here. This is now the accurate one. Binti took, uh, took me to task for not updating all the, all, the, all the paraphernalia. So that's been done now. And you can see we're here. We're on the 23rd of June, and we're going on till the 4th of July. So time is ticking. We're beginning to lose time now. And if you haven't come in um, now, you're going to find it very hard to catch up uh, in terms of all that. So keep that in mind. And again, I think for your course, when you are setting up your course, you need to think, all right, have I got a schedule organized? Is it clear when people should be doing what? All right. Keep in mind that remote learning needs a lot more support than perhaps uh, traditional face-to-face -face lecturing uh, does. So keep that in mind then. This was our first session. And then there was an activity to get to know your peers. And then there was just the page here of all my, all my propaganda, um, who I am, and so on. So to try and make me a person. And that's what you're going to have to do as well. All right. You're going to uh, have to fight this this barrier between yourself, the facilitator, the, the lecturer, the, the expert, and the students who you can't see and um, you can't they can't engage with you uh, by coming to your office or anything like that. So you need to become a presence. You need the you need the um, uh, the students to know that they're not alone, that you are there to support them and to guide them and to give them uh, uh, support. I must find that, that the WhatsApp group really does help a bit. 
So I, if I see something that I can immediately post to the group, um, just to keep some interest going and some advice. It's interesting. There are some people who are very active on the WhatsApp group, but they're not active on the LMS. <laughs> so the trick then is to find how do you make sure that uh, everyone is engaged uh, in all the different areas. All right, so that was the first little piece. And then we got going with what is facilitation. I'll just let the helicopter, I don't know if you can hear it, go over. Um, so we asked you to define facilitation. We gave you a little forum and we can see that uh, Nerwin, uh, Eugene, Anne, Salman, and Amos, and Mercy, uh, Obed as well, okay, uh, had a go at this. So the idea is you're supposed to discuss a couple of ideas. And if we look, look at... Um, uh, at some of the ideas. Facilitation is simply making something look easier. You give direction to some subject or information to say. All right. I would say that definition is on the right track, but there is a bit more that, that could be added. All right. So yes, not so much making it look easier, but allowing it to uh, be more easily unpacked and understood and the skills transferred, etc. Uh, you give direction, yes. You don't provide the answer. So it's very different from traditional teaching where you were the sage on the stage. You were the expert. Now you've got a different role. A facilitator does not just is not a ready, uh, downloadable solution to everything. Right? Your job now is to rather uh, guide and support the learners towards full understanding, etc. So you wouldn't give them the answer, you would encourage them, cajole them, bully them, um, whatever it takes to try and get them to engage with the materials and do the learning themselves. All right, so Obed, that's not bad. Let's look at Moses. Facilitating is aiding. Yeah, I like that. Uh, enabling. Yes, good, good word. Supporting, coming alongside. Very nice. Uh, encouraging, catalyzing, enhancing le the learning process. So very nice. Those, those descriptors are spot on of this idea that the facilitator is a nurturing, um, supportive role rather than some authoritative expert. All right. So keep that in mind. It's a very different type of role. So uh, well done to the team for having a go at that. That's coming on nicely. Uh, then we asked you to, um, to have a look at a little video. A little video tries to explain um, what it looks like. I'm not going to go through it now. That's for your own time. Uh, and then a couple of little readings. So here's Kamal. Uh, five common problems faced by students when they're studying online. So keep in mind then that it's very, very different uh, uh, environment for learning. It's just so easy for the students to get lost or to become dispirited or to become dissociated or even alienated, all right? So whereas previously they had their peers around them and then they could always pluck up courage and come to your office, now that's not quite so easy. They can still use the WhatsApp group. They can still use the forum discussions, etc. but now if they they haven't already built the relationships with their peers, then who do you talk to? All right. So uh, the adaptability, switching from one methodology to another is difficult. Um, they are, especially in the first week, there are just a ton of technical problems. They can't get into the LMS. They've forgotten their password. They don't have enough data. Their phone is not uh, uh, compatible with the materials, etc. So all of those things need to be troubleshoot shooted, troubleshot in the first uh, week. Also, a lot of them, um, uh, especially rural students, often haven't been exposed to all the different technologies that are available. Um, urban kids are a little bit more savvy, but that's not always the case, but they are, tend to be more so. Um, so you might need to support them in terms of computer literacy. Time management is a disaster, and it's going to be a disaster for uh, your students for sure. Because, I mean, look at you guys. You are scrambling. You've got too much on your plate. You don't have the headspace to actually be studying at the moment. 
but you're no different from the students. The students are going to be find themselves in exactly the same place. They're going to be trying to fit it in around their normal work, or they're going to be trying to fit it in around raising a family or something like that. There, it doesn't matter who you are. There are always competing uh, um, uh, uh, responsibilities, and study tends to get pushed out and back, and, oh, I'll do it later, and then it doesn't get done. All right. So your job as a facilitator then is to really, really make sure that they prioritize their studies because then they will just tend to have poor time management and it gets abused. And you can see it happening with your colleagues. I, I shouldn't tell you off. You guys are good. But your colleagues, I had 30 people on my list. And how many have we got here now? Ah, you see. So time management, even when we schedule important meetings, they can't make it. Yeah, why? Okay, so I'm not telling you off, you're good. <laughs> and then self-motivation. Uh, often e-learning does require you to um, uh, be motivated, a self-regulated learner, uh, someone who loves learning as well. And that isn't always the case. So you got to keep that in mind. Then the very problem that I'm facing, you are going to have when you engage with your students. All right. Um, so that was a little reading, a good one. Have a look through it in a bit more detail. And then I asked you to say, well, uh, in the car reading, he identified a number of characteristics that you should have. Uh, you should uh, be able to support online learning, you should have some good social skills, you should have excellent communication skills, you should be able to network and a little bit of technical skills. And I asked you to rate yourself. And this is beginning to look quite interesting now. So when we look here, you can see, for example, that uh, Nerwin and Amos feel this is very new to them, all right, and therefore uh, they're going to need uh, some support. We've got the, the intermediates, Salman and, and Ayub, who are feeling, yeah, no, bring it on. We'll see what we can do. And then Eugene and Andrew, perhaps unsurprisingly, who work in this environment, fully understand uh, this space. So, the, you, but you don't have to be advanced to be a good facilitator, but you do need to have some exposure to those things. So let's just have a look at one of the other ones. And um, I'll just go back. We'll look at uh, social networking. All right, this is nice. All right, you can see that in terms of social networking, so, um, the social media and Facebook and WhatsApp and all those goodies, uh, the expertise is a little bit higher up. Okay, so that's that's nice. All right, and that way the, I get a, a, a feeling of where you guys are. So um, that's a little poll, which you can always put in your own Moodle. All right, so you guys have built your course. Maybe if you want to elicit some um, some ideas uh, about where the students are in terms of revision or perhaps working through the materials, put in a couple of polls. They're very easy to stick in, and then they give you some quite inf interesting information. All right, so that was week uh, one, what is facilitation? And then we asked you to also have a look at the roles and responsibilities. And this is where we got to Salman's five-stage uh, model. So um, the uh, if I have a look here, you can have a quick look at her site. She explains that for most facilitation techniques, this is the little model here, um, you are going to go on a journey. It, your job as a facilitator changes over time as the over the duration of the course. So uh, she's saying that at the very early stages, most of the discussion is technical and how do I get access and um, uh, um, feeling comfortable in that type of environment. But then as you move through your course, you should find that your role as a facilitator begins to change. It's specifically what you're looking at. For example, uh, uh, helping them socialize amongst themselves in a remote environment, an online environment. Obviously, information exchange. You are the expert. Uh, not trying to negate that. I'm just saying that shouldn't be your key role, but uh, you are there to um, provide them with quality materials and um, some insight into the, uh, the, the business practice. Uh, knowledge construction is when they start taking on the role of applying what you have taught them. And then finally, the, the ability to translate it into new contexts and move on. So the development. And then your role changes as it goes through those things. So that's what she's talking about. There is a little diagram 
a written up diagram here to make it a bit easier for you. And then we've asked you to put together a little, um, a little presentation. All right. And if I have a look at the submissions, I can see at the moment I have received from Ayub. Well, let's just flick it. There we go. From Ayub, Anne, Nerwin, and Salman. So they have submitted their assignments. I'll start going through them. I was hoping for a few more before I got going. Um, the idea then is I can now monitor, do they have a real understanding of that, uh, that model um, or um, do I need to do more in that area? So um, the more things you put in your course, so if you've built your course and your course is mostly about giving them information, that's fine, but your course should also have opportunities for them to start using the information. So there should be some assignments and there should be some tests and quizzes and um, uh, uh, so that you have the ability to actually track the degree of real understanding in terms of your of your subject, et cetera. So I'm hoping you, when you did design your courses that you've put in some uh, a, a number of opportunities for the students to demonstrate that they understand what's going on. All right. Um, let me just come out. Um, and then I said, all right, so let's start thinking about uh, facilitation uh, wearing these four hats. And by now, oh, here we go. Um, by now, uh, we want you, I think you should be on your second hat. The first one is how do you stimulate good debates? And there is another forum in here. And you'll see again, um, the usual suspects are engaging, which is nice. Um, and that's why... Um, uh, I'm enjoying what they're saying, but I just wish we had more people to make it that, that much more interesting. Okay, so cool. And um, there were two little things. This is where we are now. We're up to here. But there was um, a week one quiz. And so now I can come in here and I can actually look at the seven attempts. And you see Moodle gives me plenty of information. So I can see now... Um, who got what? Here's all the grades. All right. Um, the we can see Salman is hitting it at 14. No, no, no. Our winner at the mo moment is Moses. Moses has got 15. All right. So the um, you can actually see then are there any areas that are causing grief? And at the moment there isn't. It's a kind of a spread. Um, it looks like Anne never. I oh, know. No, she did. Um, so, yeah, put in a little test here and there just again to see if they have an opportunity to think about the materials that they've, that they've done. Um, and then at the moment, we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six uh, participants. We, um, in order to draw real conclusions about your course and which are the strong sections and which are the weaker sections, you need more people to have actually done it. You need more data. But well done to those people who've had a go. That's excellent. All right. So um, in week two, I won't go into too much now, but in week two, we're changing our hat. So in the first hat, we were trying to support online learning and we're talking about forums and what your role in the forum should be, um, uh, about uh, being provocative and seeding ideas and then ultimately when it's complete you should also summarize what were the main points etc cetera, etc cetera. so that was week one week two i don't want to steal too much thunder because this is what you guys are working on at the moment all right but week two is really about how do you nurture um, proper social relationships online all right previously they happened organically in your lecture rooms now they've got to kind of take shape online. So how can you do that? So we had a little look at uh, your role to create a presence. And you can see I've tried to model that. I made a little video and I stuck it out on the WhatsApp group and on the LMS. And I would say that's maybe a good thing for you to try as well. Um, um, put together a little video. Who are you and what's the course about, etc. So how can you create an online presence? Um, and then we'd sort of give you some practical 
skills. So in Moodle, how do you do it? And the idea is you can use uh, the, the messaging system. <coughs> oh, pardon me. You can use the messaging system uh, within the Moodle. So you've got internal email, you've got announcements which are sent out to external email. Um, obviously, there's forums that you can use, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a whole host of little um, messaging systems within. Um, if I click on here, for example, I can see um, I can see all the messages I've sent out. There are no ones to me specifically. No one's talking to me, but I can see what um, uh, what I have said to to other people. So keep that in mind. Then you've got that little tool, and then we're talking about social media. So um, in this instance, we're using WhatsApp. Um, I find WhatsApp immediate and very useful. So um, normally all my courses have some type of a WhatsApp support group running in parallel. It doesn't link directly into the Moodle, but it is particularly, um, particularly useful. However, you don't have to use WhatsApp. You can use anything, all right? So um, Facebook uh, is often uh, very popular and obviously a Facebook group where people can also post things in. You don't want it to be a, um, a message, uh, an announcement system. You want it to be so they can be backwards and forwards. Um, um, so I would say rather a Facebook group or a Facebook page where uh, other people can post as well. All right. Um, I, I don't think everyone would be here yet because um, this, this is towards the end of the week, is it? I know this is about halfway. So you might have started to look at Rosenberg. So one of the things we are finding with online is not so much a problem with adult learners. So I'm not anticipating any real problems with you guys, um, but your, your students are different. Okay, Your students are more likely to feel very comfortable and even safe in this type of environment and therefore can get quite obstreperous, can get quite snarky some people feel feel that they can flame others that they can be sarcastic and nasty because there is a distance you know, they wouldn't do it to your face um, but they're quite happy to post nasty comments in forums and on the whatsapp etc it's almost like the fact that you're not together sometimes means that people are less inclined to think about what they're saying before they post it um, so Rosenberg is a very nice article. It is a little long, but I would encourage you to go through. It's very practical. So it gives a philosophy about how you should see the world. Uh, we should be more like giraffes rather than jackals. And then if you notice this little section here is how you should respond if you're finding things are going pear-shaped. All right. So if you're finding that your online community is getting a bit nasty, all right, which you, you must not allow. As a facilitator, you have to create a conducive online learning environment. All right, so you need to be quick and um, stamp it out. But you don't have to be horrible about it either. So that's why Rosenberg's very nice, is because he gives you some steps, very practical steps to keep things very civil, very clear, very concise, and um, uh, that way, no one can take offense, even the person who's doing all the nasty flaming. All right. So read through it, and then you'll see uh, it tries to describe how you should respond when these things happen. And the trick is we want you to post what you would say in here. And I can see that Anna and uh, Salman are already uh, – having a go at phrasing their communication to these problematic people. Uh, and again, I need to now go through and have a little look and see if we're on the right track. It's one thing to read an article about it. It's another thing to actually phrase your request. So that's what we want to see if you can do. All right. So um, by now, that should be where you're up to. All right. I would say... Uh, if you're not up to there, you need to put on a little bit of speed. You're going to find the third week 
almost impossible if you are too far back. So please keep um, um, working on the on the um, activities. Uh, you must be aware that I can watch the whole thing. So if I go to this down here, uh, course completion status, course report, and you'll be able to do this for your course as well. All right. Then you can see all the participants who are engaged. All right. So these people have been enrolled in the course. And now I can see all my little activities running across the top here. So these were those polls. Here are the forums. This is that first little test that we just had a look at now um, and so on. And I can see who has accessed and done what. All right, so I can see Mercy started off nicely uh, and then has somehow run out of steam. No one is like it. Um, an express train working keenly through. She's up to the end of week one quiz, but she hasn't gone into week two stuff yet. I can see Eugene uh, started off nicely and then was in too many committee meetings. All right. Obed, same story. And Anne has uh, done a bit patchy. She missed these things. But generally, she's going very nicely. She's already onto the conflict resolution section. So Anne, I'm, I'm not too worried about these little things here. She's proceeding very nicely. Moses is also patchy. We've got one here, one there, one here. So we can see what he's done by looking at the top. All right. So Moses is jumping around. I'm not too worried about that. Um, he, he keep what, what, he, what he's writing in the forums, I can see that he understands. So that's cool. Um, but I can see, yeah, he's not consistent. He's jumping around. Um, Salmon. Whoa, he's, he's almost finished. All right. He's just about finished the whole course in, in a week and a half. So very nice, Salmon. You keep going. You're great. And then Hel Helen. Well, I see little stabs. I'm not quite sure how that goes. So this, keep in mind then that you're going to have the same facilities. You'll be able to track your students very accurately in terms of what they're engaging with, when they come on, what they look at. What are their submissions to the forum? What are their submissions to the assignments, et cetera? So, um, yeah, very handy little tool. And if you haven't set it up yet on your, on your Moodle, um, then uh, get hold of Eugene and make sure that yeah, you do. Very, very useful. Uh, and just with a glance, you don't have to spend hours going through data. You just have a quick look. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, these people are good. These people are not so good. All right. Um, at a glance, you can um, determine progress and uh, uh, to what extent things are on track or not. All right. Okay. That's enough for me um, in terms of uh, course expectations. We are going to meet again next Wednesday and we'll look at the rest of the bits and pieces. But I did say in the WhatsApp that I'd open up for questions and comments and queries and uh, etc. So um, can you either use the chat to write your query or you can just put your hand up. We're not a very big group. Eugene, yes. Um, just a quick request. Would it be possible for you to share the, the this report with, uh, with the team here so that we can at least help each other out? Um, just if someone's lagging behind, maybe we can um, assist them to get going. Sure. Uh, if you want to use this as a shock tactic as well, it works quite well. People can, didn't don't realize that they're being monitored that closely. So I'm very happy yeah. to give you this uh, in a in a word document if you want, and then you can. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's go with Moses. You got your mic on. Have you got a query or question? Uh, not really, but. Uh, uh... Just as you note that um, in my section, there is a, a lot of jumping and um, uh, the reason could be uh, technologically handcuffed. So sometimes you think you have uh, sent the assignment and maybe it's not actually been able to, to go. So maybe uh, that is an issue that I need to check on. Um, you can see your own reports as well. So if you scroll down to the bottom when you're logged in and you say, show me the course report, 
Uh, yeah. uh, let me just do it again. So it's, uh, let me come out of here. I'll show you where to look. Uh, so the students as well can, when they're on the main page, can just scroll to the bottom and they'll have this course completion status box. Uh, your, your Moodle is set up differently. If I remember correctly, these boxes appear on the left and the right, not at the bottom. All right. So um, when you set them up, the students will have the ability to actually uh, click on there and see only their own progress. So they'll be able to see which ticks they don't get, haven't got yet. Uh, that, as you say, there could be a technical problem, like you didn't have enough bandwidth to upload your assignment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but all the activities um, have been flagged. Uh, let me just show you how that happens. It's uh, if I turn my editing on and say, for example, I wanted um, to see if students had access this reading. So then I can go to, um, I'm sorry, I go to the top. I'm trying to remember on this one how you do it. Course settings, course completion. And so you can go here and you can identify what as a facilitator or as the lecturer or as the author, you can go in and then you can set up which are the things that you want to track? And to be honest, you can track anything, all right? And you can say how it must be completed. So sometimes they just have to see it. That's fine. You might say that's fine. And then sometimes you say, no, they need to submit and they must get a passing grade before they get their tick. All right. So it's up to you to decide uh, what, does, what does it mean to say that they have completed uh, one of the pieces? All right. Okay. So keep that in mind then. Um, you've got uh, you as the author of your course and as the facilitator will have the rights to put in that tracking course completion section. All right. Okay, Moses, thank you. Uh, any other questions, queries? Paul Peter, are you good? Thank you so much, Andrew. You're such an excellent instructor. Uh, I'm actually uh, quite encouraged despite the busy schedule. I'll make a great effort to ensure that I, I am in lockstep with the rest of the class. Thank you so much. And thanks, Good. Eugene and the team. Yeah, yeah. Eugene's doing a lot of good work in the background. In fact, he's doing all the technical work. I just do the glory pieces where I come here. Oh. So, yes, thank you, Eugene. Thank you very much. Any other queries, questions? Um, uh, Andrew. Uh, yes. We're, we're, we're also part of the technical team is uh, Boris Odilo and Marcy Bonareri, so they're also supporting the process. So ah, okay. I'm not working alone. All right, so it's Boris and? Marcy. Mercy. Mercy Bonareri. Mercy, okay, cool. All yeah. right, thank you, Mercy, and thank you, Boris, for all the running around in the background. Now I suspect that uh, these guys are going to come and ask you to turn all the course completions on it for their for their courses. All right, now that they can see how useful it is. Uh, when you are in, a, in an environment whereby you know bandwidth is good, I normally insist that the cams stay on. Um, you'll do this in the very last section when you talk about these webinars and how to actually run them properly. Um, the reason why is because then you can see if people are engaging properly or actually bored, et cetera. All right. So if, I know you guys have all got bandwidth issues and that's why you prefer them to be off. But the fact that um, some people, when you talk to them, don't even switch on means are they even there? I know I've done it. I've gone downstairs and made a cup of coffee. <laughs> Uh, which you don't want. You, you as, a, or as a facilitator, you don't want them wandering off. All right. So uh, if you have bandwidth, good bandwidth, then make sure that people keep their cams on. All right. As I say, I'm a little concerned that we are, we've got so many enrollments and yet there's really only a little core of six to eight people who are really going for it. Um, so those people who are here today and you know that you are behind, Please, can you push forward? We are tracking. We're watching what you're doing, what you're not doing. So don't think you can just say, oh, I was in the, in the Zoom meeting. I need my certificate. Because the real proof of the pudding is in the Moodle. You have to work through those materials, and we are tracking what you're doing. So keep that in mind. All right. Okay. Any, one last chance. 
Um, just as a final thought, I, I think we'll be my, myself and the technical team will be um, reaching out to people uh, one one on one. So we'll be making calls. Just make sure that uh, everyone is on the same page, or at least we're moving. And if there's any inactivity, we can see how to best get people moving. All right. Uh, that's the end of today's session. You are free to go. Thank you very much.